All right, so previously on Lekin's Table, Curious, we've done some infinite loops involving Lekin's Lust to knock the spawns into the bosses, deal zillions of damage. Those were uh, quite something, but what if we just disallow ourselves from using Lekin's Lust? Let's just pretend it's not even there. Can we still complete the level one challenge? And the answer is, turns out there's another solution. Now, I'm using Gorgon here because, you know, Errand Boy Part 3 required you to use Gorgon here, so I figured it would, like, make sense symmetry-wise to keep using Gorgon. If you want to do this yourself, strongly, strongly recommend just use Warlord. You need Sidestep, so Warlord is the one way to avoid needing to scum to get Sidestep. And on top of that, Gorgons can't be gnomes. Gorgon, we had to prep to cool for reasons that will become clear far down the line, whereas a warlord could go Mysteria, get those cheaper sidesteps. I don't play this anywhere close to perfectly by any means. This is kind of a rough run for me. A lot of mistakes comes right down to the wire. As a warlord, I did a test just to run, just to see how it would go, and absolutely stomped it. So. Warlord is definitely the easiest way to do this approach, but I started with Gorgon. The quest had us do Gorgon for the base dungeon. I had to see it through as a Gorgon. This is my first time ever really taking Dispersion Seal, and basically the reason for that is I want more mana. And specifically, I'm only doing like a couple of fights, so I want dispersion seal to get me the mana for those fights. Previously I'd been taking shield and uh, letting Binlor be my source of knockback. Here I don't care how strong the knockback is, just that I have it at all, so I'll be taking bear mace instead. And I've got Fido to apply some corrosion, and I'm going to start corroding this level 9 warlock. I really want to kill this level 9 warlock. So all I'm going to do for a while is walk around in circles, Hitting this level 9 Warlock whenever I get a death protection to build up a little more corrosion on it. Trying to go up there, but the level 9 Warlock is now blocking my path to the center of the dungeon, so... I had to go back. I want the Warlock to be near the boss, the sacrifice. I don't actually know where the sacrifice is at the moment, but I know it's not down in this brightly lit portion of the south, so I'm just kind of knocking it into a central location, and wherever the sacrifice ends up being, hopefully it'll be easy to get them together. Now you might say, but you have wait what? Shouldn't it be easy to get them together regardless? And the answer is yes, but... A, I've probably forgotten I have wait what at this point, knowing me. I'm pretty sure I did something along those lines. And B, if possible, I'd like to not have to spend eight mana on wait what. This run is uh, the mana's tight. Mana's really tight. This comes down to the wire. So anywhere I can get any savings at all would help. Which probably means I shouldn't have picked up the white one in the first place. I should have picked up the blood to power and then use that down in the basement in the golem.exe, wizard.exe, that was it. That little sub dungeon just to turn my health into mana when I'm gonna lose all my health to death protection popping anyhow. Didn't do that, that's somewhere I could have played better. As I said, lots of places I could play better here. Now, this is a level 1 challenge, which the way I'm interpreting it here means basically only get XP from killing bosses. I'm fine with killing this warlock because it won't actually die when killed. It uh, instead will respawn as a goat, and the type of goat it respawns as will depend on how many other monsters we've killed so far. Again, in Lekin's Table Curious, they follow a predictable order. People with Lekin's silverware generally eat goats. So the first one will be a pride goat, the second will be a wrath goat, the third will be a lust goat, and so on. 
So using that, I can control exactly what type of goat it respawns as, because I want a high-level goat of a very specific type. We're building up corrosion very slowly here. I took Fido instead of Marta Wraps, partly for the death protection, but partly because I was hoping to find Marta Wraps in a shop. No such luck. But between needing to find Sidestep and needing to find the boss and the level 9 monster and Sidestep early enough to actually have darkness left to do all this stuff, the run was already way scummy enough. I didn't want to force the Martyr Raps. That would have taken much longer. A Warlord probably could. Please do this run as a no Warlord. It gets rid of all the annoying parts and just leaves you with the fun stuff. I'm dealing a bit less than a quarter of the Warlock's damage between the hit and the knockback. I really like to be able to kill it in four hits, but the map is very dark, the standard sub-dungeon has no darkness. It's not looking like that's going to be super viable. Misplay there, I got my mana back without actually popping my death protection. And because you can only cast sidestep when you're at more than half your health, well, at least half your health, well, it's actually kind of fuzzy. If you're at 11 max HP, you need 5 health remaining to cast it, so it seems like you need to be at least half rounded down of your max HP, which is really not intuitive. But that's just how it is. But because of that, I'll likely have to waste some mana exploring unless I can find another use for it, which we're pretty boxed in. I can probably use Endiswall to get access to somewhere I wouldn't otherwise be able to reach. There is a mana booster on the ground. I'm leaving it there for now because I did take this dispersion seal. I'm not sure if that was a mistake or not, but I want to use it on a mana booster to get uh, more mana, basically as like an extra health potion or extra mana potion, excuse me. And that, I've already picked up two, so that's the only one left. I drank the dodge potion and didn't actually get the dodge. I should have just attacked some random low level monsters until I got the dodge. I failed to do that. Bad decision making here, but we'll muddle through. Sorry, so that health potion gets me to 5 health. That's enough that I can cast sidestep. Worshipping Dracul means that that drops my max HP to 1. I get punished for using holy magic. And I'll be honest, literally the only reason I prepped Dracul was so that he could punish me. Because it's a little known trick. If your max HP is 1, you're always at above half your max HP, which means sidestep is always castable. Now the dodge becomes available, I'm not going to be able to get use of it. Used a lot of resources there I didn't need to, but we did get a Lekin's Wrath near the uh, sacrifice. Lekin's Wrath, very interesting Sin Goat. In particular, it has 500% knockback. And that's what we're going to be abusing here. I'm going to hit Lekin's Wrath. It's going to knock me into the sacrifice. Sacrifice is going to take massive damage. I'm going to be fine because I have death protection. Sacrifice will take the damage. And that's the plan for dealing damage here. It's not an infinite loop by any means, but it's big damage. And that's why I want it to be level 9. It deals more than half the sacrifice's max HP with every hit. Yes, Dracul, you're very impressive. 
I've already got one HP. What are you gonna do, Dracul? I kind of forgot about the death protections when I was doing this. Just completely slipped my mind that that was gonna be a problem. So I'm using mana potions to pop some of them. There's still one left. I need zero death protections before my uh, death gaze becomes relevant. So what's going to end up happening to happen here is I'm going to need to explore, get some mana back, get some death protection back, get pot, uh, mana for Pizorf back, and then... Yeah, if you're cool, keep trying to punish me. Uh, I can get uh, the Sacrifice's HP back down to 1 from another knockback, and then I can use Pizor. Now, unfortunately, I haven't positioned this very well. The only way I can push this guy around with Pizorf at the moment is if I step on that mana booster. But I really wanted to use uh, Dispersion Seal on that mana booster, so I guess I'm doing that now. Now, my next cast gives me mana equal to the glyph's cost instead of subtracting it, so I'm going to use Sidestep. Huge, huge mana. That means that I can use Pizarf, that brings me down to 18, then my death gaze happens and I'm back down to 12 mana. Apparently if you're over your max mana and you level up, you don't actually get to keep the extra mana, you get reduced to your max mana. I think that's an expansion-only thing, because I don't think the base game ever lets you be over your max mana. It's possible I'm wrong, but I can't think of any situations where that can happen. I could have just punched that Lekin's Gluttony to death, but that would be getting an XP valuable kill on something other than the boss. And why would I want to do that? Go for the level 1 challenge. And despite being level 6, I'm going to say I'm still fulfilling it, kind of. I'm going to move this Assault of Lekin down to near a level 10 Wrath Goat. There's so many level 10s that spawn that you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to find one of the right type you want. In this case, Wrath. Unfortunately, it's hard to re-explore to get stuff back here. The thing is that the greed goats, when untrouted, drain all your health and mana, so they're not the best for restorations. Thinking about this health booster, that'll give me plus six. That means I'll be at two HP after three punishments. That's fine. Two HP is fine because it means I'll still always be able to cast sidestep. Now, the secret sub-dungeon was the Ring of Eight level 1 monsters. I should use Pizorf on one of them to open up the darkness down there. I didn't think to do that in advance of starting this next phase of the boss battle, so I'll be punished for that, but... Or punished as in I lose some efficiency, not punished as in Dracul-style punishments. Dracul-style punishments are for unrelated reasons. I'm going to get hit and then drink some health potions so that I can A, cast sidestep again, B, get punished, and C, get some schadenfreude value. Drinking the health potion not to get healed at all, literally just to be punished, so that sidestep becomes castable. Vessel of Luckin is at half health. I can't ever attack the Vessel of Luckin directly or else it'll start teleporting around and eating goats and doing the Steno thing. If I could worship Mystera, this would be great, because then I would be able to convert these glyphs for refreshment value. 
I tried prepping the stair previously and just scumming to find uh, Dracul, but it took a lot of scums. It looks like I'm low on resources, so I'm going to waste some mana here to get access to this stuff. Using mana in combat, definitely not something that makes me happy. Wizard.exe is a pretty solid find. It doesn't give me any darkness, but it does give me the ability to turn my end of swall into two death for two more death protections at the very end. And let's be real, it's not like I'm doing anything else with it now that I'm completely out of mana. There's a potion shop over there. I didn't buy anything from it. I probably should have picked up a Schadenfreude potion and used that at some point earlier in the battle. A lot of mistakes here. Very sloppy play. Vessel of Luckin is low, but not low enough. I'm starting to convert some things, hoping that maybe if I can get it in Death Gaze range, that'll be enough. But my attacks just aren't strong enough to kill the Vessel of Luckin, even with Death Gaze's help. I only have like 30 base damage. And oh look, there's a Badge of Honor here. That gives me one more death protection, which gets the Vessel down to one health, and I win. Would have had Hoarder if I hadn't co converted all those close without thinking, but really doesn't matter. So, turns out Lust isn't the only way to win the level 1 challenge here in Lekin's Table Curious. Wrath is another solution to the puzzle. <laughs> 